Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 16th, 2016 uh, Scarborough Town Council workshop on fireworks. Uh, I'd like to welcome Katie Foley, who is newly elected member. We've invited her to join us at the workshop session today. She will be uh, sworn in at the next regular meeting. Uh, but in this case, a uh, good opportunity to to say hello and meet uh, Katie and uh, get her involved. Um, we're going to start with uh, 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 a bit of a summary by the town manager of uh, the materials that he's gathered, and then we will ask for public comment, uh, and then we'll uh, throw it around amongst ourselves. Yes, through the years, really since 2012, when consumer fireworks were first allowed uh, and lawful in the state, um, I know Kate Sinclair was on ordinance committee, and I'm sure you'll hear some of the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that commentary that occurred back uh, several years ago. But every year since, really around the holidays, where when the time of year that we permit fireworks, there's a flurry of interest and some concern around that. And this year was no different. Um, and really in the spirit of trying to gauge the interest of the community, uh, with the best of intentions, I assure you, we put together a fairly simple survey, uh, yet not very scientific. Uh, the methodology was flawed, such that a lot of the results, I think, are suspect, and I just want to throw that out first. Um, we did provide, and I have a couple copies here, but um, in advance of this, uh, the results of that survey it was a two-question survey. Essentially, do you agree with the current firework regulations, yes or no? And if you don't, uh, then we gave a number of responses, and those responses were kind of all over the map, um, either expanding it or restricting it. And it's really for that reason some of these, these results are very hard to interpret and um, rely on very heavily. So there's some commentary that went along with it. I, I guess what I would suggest is the biggest takeaway is we had about 1,000 people that weighed in, and undoubtedly there were folks with multiple responses. We have no way of gauging that. But nonetheless, if someone took the time to take the survey twice, that suggests a level of interest in and of itself. So uh, clearly this is an issue that the community um, is interested in. And <coughs> it also is clear to me that there needs to be some more work to understand where that interest lies. Um, and there's a number of strategies I hope we can talk about tonight as to be a little more exacting um, about trying to get more information. Tonight was intended to be a listening session to receive further input in uh, the crowd doesn't look all that uh, large this evening, so I'm not sure if you'll get those results tonight, but I'm pleased to talk uh, after you've received input from the public and had conversation yourself about how we might be able to um, get some additional information and get a path forward at this point. Great. Thank you. Uh, members of the public, anyone wishing to uh, speak to us about the virus issue, please first the podium, name and address, and... Go right ahead. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. I guess I was too honest to answer the survey more than once, either that or too much. <laughs> I figured it was a one-shot deal. I didn't even try it the second time. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, personally, I have two dogs. One of them is a rescue adopted dog. He's scared of his own shadow and fireworks just absolutely terrify this boy to where he loses all control. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there's two little girls that moved in next door to me, and when the fireworks go off, they run home because they're scared. So it's not just me, it's those two little girls as well. And my last point is, nobody obeys the rules anyhow. I call the police all the time because the fireworks are going off on days that are not on the schedule. So the system you have isn't working. The system we have, rather, since it is a we thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Others uh, wishing to speak? Good <coughs> evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Graham. I am the uh, GM of Phantom Fireworks over Scarborough. Um, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, we know the fireworks is, we thank you very much for having us on the five days we have. You know, fireworks are always an American tradition. As it's said, we will celebrate these for years to come by several presidents. It's an honor, the fact that you allow us here, and we do appreciate that. Now, 
Also, I've said this in the past, and I've spoken with the local fire department and that, it's not only legalizing them, but it can also be done with permits. I've brought this up at several meetings. It could be a fee done by the fire department, check out the site, even watch over it if necessary, and be done. It's a safe, good way. It can be posted when these dates are going to happen here at the town. It's a smart way of doing things. And that will take out the way of people doing things on their own. But all in all, again, we hope everybody stays safe. We promote safety first in everything we do. Um, I've given out safety flyers. I'll make sure everyone has them before we go. But uh, for Maine, every customer we do gets a safety flyer. It says, respect your neighbors. I have to get them out. And we do do this for every single customer. We do our farthest, most best to make sure everybody is safe and has fun and enjoys America's celebration. Thank you very much. Jeff, this is intended to be an informal discussion, and uh, uh, I think the idea of permits is probably uh, unique to some of us. We're not really aware mm -hmm. of communities that do permitting by individuals, private citizens, mm -hmm. as opposed to a public display. Can you tell us a little bit about communities you're familiar with? and? I'm blessed. I've actually owned, uh, it's actually not owned, but I've worked at five different showrooms across the country, actually. Um, I've been all over the place, from Pennsylvania to uh, New Hampshire, now here. Um, Pennsylvania is all regulated. Yeah. Um, if you go to the town council, you do get a permit. I mean, it's banned in Pennsylvania, but yeah. consumer legal fireworks. We do have to say this. This is consumer legal fireworks. These aren't professionals. Right. right. Um, you get the permit. They will, town council or someone from there will inspect the site they say it on. And they can purchase with a permit, buy it, and set it off on a certain date between a certain time. Um, it does work out very nice for the state. It's revenue for the fire department, and this takes a lot of weight off the police even for these moments. And uh, as long as that's out there, and at that point you do, you talk to your neighbors, you let them know, you give them a heads up. You know, it's a safe, smart, informative way of correcting something that may need corrected. Here. Yes, go right ahead. Um, some of the information that I've gotten, um, some communities give them out like they do fire permits. So um, depending on what the weather is, um, I, I'm not a, I'm not in the FD, so I'm not 100% familiar with all of their criteria and things like that. But I know that it's very regulated, and the permits are given through the fire department with um, the same stipulation that they would be given out like they were um, giving a fire permit. Um, there is a fee, which, you know, for towns like us, we're always looking for, you know, other, other site, other ways of revenue. Um, it also helps it be controlled, which is a great thing. There's a list of who has the permits, um, who, who can have them. It's a very easy, if someone, if a neighbor calls into dispatch, dispatch has a copy of that list. So they're able to quickly see, oh, 11 Blackberry Lane, they have a permit to, to let off fireworks till 10 o'clock. They're, the, they're not breaking the law, they're not doing anything wrong. So it's, just, it's kind of another way. I didn't wanna, I'm not trying to jump on your bandwagon, but um, as you know, I've been researching this for a long time. No, thank you. Uh, Chris. So a couple questions for you, Jeff. Uh, in the communities where you've done this before, what type of fee are you, you, you talking about? Are you talking like tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars? It's not really community. I mean, it's every, again, it's like the towns here, which town, how much they do, and what they mm -hmm. go through. It's been anywhere from a $50 permit up to, I've seen a $400 permit in other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, all in all, and do it correctly on the uh, off five days a year. You know, it's one way to regulate it, so it's done. Do you know of any towns in the greater Portland area who use this system? Not at this time. No. Okay. No. All right. Can I follow them? Yes. Sorry. Uh, uh, so then, uh, are you aware in the other communities that you're talking about in Pennsylvania, let's say, with <coughs> these fees, uh, do you know part of their uh, permitting requirement is to discuss it with neighbors to find out if it's okay with them, or is it really just a site inspection to make sure you, you know you know you don't brush around, you don't have the fire hazards or something like that? As far as I know, because I've not been on one personally. Yep. Um, okay. As far as I know, it's a site. As for the neighbors, you know, it is up to the person normally. Mm -hmm. Or it's done, as I said, it's listed in the town council meetings or in the paper as a yep. listing on this date, this so and so will be. And, you know, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, I met now, even off days, you know, our new big thing, weddings. 
is big for Star Wars nowadays. Um, our big one that we've come out with this year, Phantom this year, is uh, Gender Reveal. It's been oh, huge. Oh, that's so cute. Either Sorry. fire off a blue or a pink to let the neighbors know. <laughs> and I think it's a great way for the neighbors to know, and it's fun, it's exciting. Everybody is outside looking in the red for it. So it's also another way to say hello or celebrating <coughs> our child's coming. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's amazing how many different things come through. Uh, other celebrations people don't realize in town, um, I get a lot through here, is Diwali. It's the yeah. end of New Year. That's true. We actually do have fountains in our show are called the Festival of Light. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the actual name. We actually came out with names just for it. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's a ground fountain with no noise and just all color. Mm -hmm. So it's safe, fun, and good to do in your backyard for their holiday. That's cool. Interesting. Uh, Sean, question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first, Jeff, just, you know, um, really want to compliment your company because I know of some young people who have gone in and tried to purchase, and you guys are, do a very good level of due diligence. Thank you. So um, I really appreciate that, given the industry. The question about the industry, though, is that do you see, um, in this particular area, because I know that you start, it's not just about fiber things that come to your store, um, are the number of people coming in, is the, is the orders, are the orders getting larger so the activity is really the event is a larger event, or is this, you know, mo majority of orders are a bunch of sparklers and fire, you know what I mean, uh, or are they smaller and less showy? I, I don't even know how to describe that. Of course, New Year's and Fourth of July is our big time. Yeah. Right. There's no doubt. For us, the year is more small and low-key at times. I can say that. But uh, for the most part, it depends on the individual. Some people are like, you know, this is legal in my town. Not just Scarborough. Yeah. You'll talk to other towns. You know, we talk to our town. They said we can do this. They will get the large quantities if they're allowed to. Yeah. You know, it all depends how you regulate. And so, so the second follow-up, follow if you don't mind, the follow-up yeah. question is, in considering the permit, would pricing and the amount being purchased be a good measure to determine the level of uh, severity or oversight or risk, whatever, however you want to describe that? Would that be a good measure? No, all our product is tested okay. for the AFSL, American Fire Standards Laboratory. It's all gone through testing. In fact, we go through the American testing and plus our own. Um, everything is double checked with the fireworks. We do guarantee all our products. We want everything safe and sane and have a good time. But as for the consumption, I mean, it, it just depends on the individual. So what I'm looking at is that um, I think I would be more concerned about someone coming in and purchasing $500 worth of fireworks rather than $50, because $50 seems to me to be a very small um, right. centralized kind of activity that's right. not as significant as a 400 500 whatever the dollar amount. I don't know where. I've never purchased fireworks, so I don't know. Um, so I was just wondering if that might be a measure in which, you know, if we do implement the permitting, mm -hmm. this might be where greater due diligence in the permitting process, um, it would be triggered because of that. Yeah, that's something like I said. Um, as to the end on that one, let me say this the right way. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to have a firework shoot, as long as somebody comes in and says you're safe for this area, Okay. Our product is all listed online. Every video of every product is shot off online. You can go to fireworks.com, click on it. Anything you see in our showroom, every most everything that is named has a QR code on it. You can walk up, pop it right in the showroom, and play it on your cell phone. You can see if it goes side to side. It goes straight up, whatever it is. We have videos there, handheld. Anything we can do to, see, to say if this is safe or you're, you're going or what it is. Okay. Thank you very much. No very much. Will? <coughs> Two questions, if I could. Um, first one was, when, when uh, you see an ordinance that, that you look at site inspection, is there, um, uh, are there often regulation around how far away from a neighboring mm -hmm. structure or um, property line or something like that? Um, in the past, um, I was a member of New Hampshire. New Hampshire did do testing on fireworks. Anything that went over 40 feet, you know. They try to keep in certain boundaries. Most of ours, yes, there's a distance and everything else. We can get that up from work on certain products. I have timelines on how long each one lasts. Everything I expect on them is needed for someone if they ever ask. Mm -hmm. We probably can have this herbal supply. I guess I was referring more to the, to the ordinance. Like, yeah. did, did you see the ordinance talk yeah. about like a distance from yeah. other structures? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, second question. You can't be anywhere uh, 300 feet by our building. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't want your fire building. <laughs> 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 How do you shoot environmental? There's a lot of like 
explosive and little bits of plastic that get scattered. Like, how, how do you? Can you describe any, the like the environmental impact of the, the product? We do tell everybody to have a bucket of water, everything ready for cleanup. We do tell everybody to please clean up, inspect everything. You know, take care of what you do. But the expectation is people go around, they pick up a little bit. Of Absolutely, I would hope so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jim Wright. Um, this is more just commentary on what I've been hearing. I was intrigued when you said about the permitting for people to, because as, as most of you know, or maybe you don't, that if you want to do a burn at your house, you have to get a permit for the fire department. And they do base it on every day the state fire service comes out with, you know, days. Because I know one of my major concerns with fireworks, particularly this year, has been drought. Um, you know, people shooting them off, even legally, and we've had a dry summer. And that's expected, excuse me, to continue, that uh, it's a real fire hazard, potential fire hazard. So to me, it's interesting that if somehow or other the ordinance committee, if they were to look at this, would look at, you know, are there parameters around permitting that can happen? Um, and then, my, I, and which makes me wonder, do people get the permits? and then come to the fire? Do you check to see what their permits are so they aren't overbuying? Is that where you were going with? Kind of. Okay. Well, yeah, we don't, I don't know about overbuying on that aspect, but yes, we will check for the permits if it's. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just an idea, permit. too. I mean, well, the difference is also, yeah, it's one of the things you have the permit. I mean, Maine, everything, anybody can walk in right. the door and purchase. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's. But as it comes for neighbors and police and your fire department, it is the safe and right way to you do it. You don't require people to show you a license to purchase the products. A driver's license, yes. Yeah, but, but a license permit. A permit. Yeah, from a town. If a town no. were issuing it, okay. yes. That's just my question. Right. Now, if, if you anybody does come in and ask for the restrictions, you know, we do have the Scarborough up at our store. We do inform them. Um, we also say anybody from any other town, we give them the website to go online for Bain.gov mm -hmm. under the fire marshal's office under Community mm -hmm. Legal Fireworks. Mm -hmm. We send them there to check. And uh, we make sure people know where to do and where to go. Just follow up. Follow up and then Because Because my, uh, and again, I'm just throwing this out there for thought, food for thought, is that if, in fact, you go to a permitting, someone, you know, they go in and they buy all sorts of fireworks, and they go to get a permit from the fire department, and they can't use their fireworks for whatever reason. <laughs> people aren't real good at self-restraint, as we know. So, I mean, I just throwing that out there. Uh, that's a, that is, it's to be, you'd have to build that into yeah. Yeah. how you deal with it, can yeah. yeah, I would say that you would have to have a permit before you're able to purchase it in this town. Um, when I was looking into it, there is nobody in the state. Um, I didn't find anyone in New England, but um, it's, it's hard to do that search. It's time consuming. Um, that does do permitting for this type of activity. Um, obviously, fire burning is much more popular and everybody does that, but as for permitting for fireworks for recreational use, um, I did not find any other towns, at least in Maine, um, that do this like this. Um, but we also have to remember, too, that we're really the only one in the area that even allows recreational um, right. let off of fireworks in general. So, I mean, to well, me, it's... You, you, and that, that information came to you from the Ordinance Committee work, correct? correct. That, Tom, is, did you get any update on that, or is that the Some sense good. that there's no one else? Gorham does. The Gorham second page yeah. shows a quick oh, little over column on Greater Portland. Portland. So the column on the left is the complete prohibition. It's Buxton, Falmouth, Freeport, Old Orchard Beach, Portland, Saco, South Portland, and Yarmouth. And then restricted uses for Cumberland, Gorham, and Westbrook. Mm -hmm. You can certainly provide and details around that. Their their restricted use is much more restricted <coughs> than us. When we looked into it, we we definitely allow um, our our rules are more flexible, right. offer more, um, which is why we're I think we're more popular. Mm -hmm. People want to come here and do it. Yeah. Cool. Um, is it okay to address, I just wanted to address something really quick that Councillor Chiazzo had mentioned about, you know, is it, whose responsibility is it really to notify neighbors and, you know, if you're going to be letting off fireworks and things like that, is that part of the process, who does that? You know, when they give out fire permits, nobody notifies neighbors. I mean, that's just the way it is. 
Um, you know, you would hope that if you're a good neighbor, you're going to let your neighborhood, I know that someone in my neighborhood lets them off every 4th of July, and they always send out an email to our neighborhood group, here it is, this is the time, come if you want, but not everyone does that. And I think down in our beach communities is where we have really the, the worst of it. Um, and that's where my biggest concern is, is those beach communities. Um, that those fireworks just rain down on top of some of those homes. I mean, uh, Councillor Blaze used to tell us that he right. could basically have taken a shovel to his roof um, after the 4th of July because it gets so bad. Right. Um, and the hard part is our, our police department is so taxed, we can't send a PD officer right. to fireworks every single time you know, they're going off. But if we do implement a permit system like this, then it gives dispatch a way for them to be able to tell, is this a permitted action or not? Um, and if it is a permitted action, then we don't need to send an officer there. Then we have to unfortunately inform the neighbor, right. your neighbor has it permit. has a permit that's been issued to them, just like hunting licenses. We have had we have people that call the PD and ask, hey, can my neighbor hunt? Does he have a license? And we give that information. So this would be similar to that. Yes, your neighbor has a permit. He is allowed to let those fireworks off until whatever time you know this council decides if they make a change. And I think you're right, the, the, the notice is usually done because of the courtesy that the Correct. person letting them off, not because of any obligation. Correct. But, and I could see how the difference between a fireworks display and a, a fire, you, I think there may be a greater hazard to spray Correct. it sure. off your property with wind and, and whatnot. So yeah. I agree. Uh, notification to neighbors mm -hmm. would seem to be uh, appealing. Yeah. And I've never, uh, you know, through this whole process, since, since t I started talking with Tom about this, I've never pushed to completely eliminate fireworks. My concern has been that I thought that what happened was when the, when the fireworks ordinance needed to be put together, it was put together quickly because we had to meet that need, and it was done well. But I believe that now it's almost like, okay, we gave it that trial period. Mm -hmm. Now it's time. We need to go in and fine-tune this, and we need to listen to some of our, our residents. And while, yes, we may not have a large audience here, I have emails that go back for over four years. Some are from firefighters that, sh that have concern. I don't mind forwarding those to people that have concerns over fireworks being let off under the regulations that we have standing now. Uh, other, uh, uh, can I, can I hold on? Am I allowed? To? Sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was allowed. No, sure. Go ahead. Actually, just a quick question. You mentioned um, noiseless fireworks, yes. mm -hmm. and um, that's it's interesting because someone else just forwarded me an article recently about that uh, in Italy. Apparently, that's become in all of their big displays the big thing. So I'm curious at the consumer level, is that is there enough available that would appeal to the average consumer if they were? to come into your store for, you know what I mean? They like, like the noise. I know they want the noise. <laughs> the noise is a It's a safe and safe item for that one. Yeah. You know, fireworks are fireworks. Yeah, is there Just a way curious. But it's, you know, we do our best to keep it where it is. It is governed on the noise. There are no titanium flashes in consumer legal fireworks. Right. There's nothing that will, you know, set up alarm, nothing big. It's all regulated. It's all done safe and correctly to the 1.4G standard. What what is the degree of hazard in a close close neighborhood of older structures so that they don't have necessarily <coughs> some of the fire resistant uh, roofing and whatnot that uh, does your do, do you have a sense of what the fire risk is of a large display in that setting? Um, at this time, the proximity is everything else. No, I don't know that one. You know that's again you have to leave it to your common person for common sense. You have to put the responsibility out there and pray people do do it. Mm -hmm. Most of our customers come in. We are educated where I am. We do train them. We talk to them. We make sure, you know, people start with crazy stories. We cut them off. We don't let them. This is not something, you know, mm -hmm. should be done with the fire. <coughs> you know, we are responsible. Mm -hmm. We are very good when we conduct with our customers. Jeff was telling me before the meeting that they have a what's called a safety table. Absolutely. Uh, uh, which is a setting within the store that uh, is there for the purpose of giving people safety advice. 
uh, something that we might all, if we carry this further, uh, uh, go and, and understand more about what the industry tries to do to provide uh, a safe use of these, this product. Other questions? Chris? Uh, no questions, but I think we're out of time, so I'd like to get some comments in before we, before yeah. we go. Oh, Sorry. Well, yeah. I did have one last question. Go ahead. So one of, one of the things that um, I've been wondering about our, our current ordinance is the, the time that it goes until the, the, um, that we extend our hours to. I'm wondering if you could comment at all about what you've seen elsewhere as well. As uh, in terms of we allow until 1230 at night, I'm wondering. I'm not sure. Whether okay. you know, every Thanks. place is done so differently. Is it say one That's person? Sorry, everyone does plan. <coughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, certainly, it makes, you know. The July, cool. uh, uh, thank you, Jeff. Any other questions to the public? I'd like to say, though, you know, right the permit wise, we'd like to do on the off days. New Year's Eve, 4th of July. Our country celebrates the fireworks. Mm -hmm. It is a tradition. It's something you should keep. It's a wonderful thing. In these upcoming years, with the least amount of public shows out there, it's a booster for a lot of people. It's something the country needs. It's fun. It should be done right. right. We pray. We hope. We're happy we have these days that are legal. We hope we can keep them. And we will do everything we can to keep them safe. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, others in the audience who would like to address council on this. Hi, Marge the Sanks of 54 Beechridge Road. Um, the permit idea is something my husband and I had spoken about like a week or two ago when we talked to somebody. So we were talking about permits. But even um, like when you talk about Ed's house down where he got so much on the roof, even if you do permit, um, are you going to permit everybody on the street? Because mm -hmm. then you're going to still have the same issue. So, you know, you're, you know even with permits, you're going to have clusters of people all in the same area that want to do huge displays and you're going to end up with the same problem that you're talking about in some other areas. So I like the permit idea, but I, you know, I don't know how you'll govern that and, you know, so many permits. Like, I don't think everybody on the street could get a fire permit at the same time either. I mean, there, right. you know, so, so, you know, just that one other thing to consider when you do this. Thank you. Others in the audience? <coughs> um, I just have a, a couple questions regarding how the name, name and address, please. Oh, sorry, uh, Ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines Drive, Scarborough. Um, I have a question as to how the data was collected, because as I read it, uh, the report kind of suggested that no action really needed to be done. There was yes and no, 56 percent. I, I don't know what the standard deviation was on that, but uh, from from my reading of the documentation, it's it's you know, we're answering the few people that continue to write emails and, and continue to show annoyance. If if we, you know, continue to lock down on fireworks, you're going to drive the two stores that are in town sort of out of business. And that gives us another opportunity to have what happened across the street where for like two or three years that was just an eyesore. Driving up uh, the road every single day was just a cement tower until finally someone had money to come around. So if you completely, you know, really lock down on it, where we have two stores in town, you're going to put one of them out of business, and one is on Route 1 again, and that's just going to be an empty building again after the Napa Auto Parts, and who knows how long that's there for. So, you know, I know the idea is to have public safety and, and keep things safe, but to me, the documentation uh, based off pulling the the town and everything doesn't really suggest there's enough evidence to even um, go about changing things. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, let's talk. Uh, is no one else in the audience? Thank you. I just want to remind you, we do have Officer Weed here for photos. Here so if you leave five minutes okay. or so, so. Thank you. Uh, let's start. We'll start with you, and we'll we'll just go around, let people sort of give their own sense. Three minutes. <laughs> Briefly, for problem. Me. Problem. For me. Yeah, exactly. For me. Uh, so I, I think um, I think it, you know, from my personal perspective, I'm not a fan of the fireworks. But again, if it's a um, you know what we're willing to limit for other people, I think that there are definitely environmental concerns. Uh, <coughs> that certainly scares dogs, wakes up children, wakes up adults. 
um, scarce horses. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I think there's there's definitely a, a nuisance factor. Um, <coughs> really, you know, if we would be nibbling around the edges, if we were to just cut back hours and maybe cut back days, or or um, uh, I guess I still <coughs> to to the last speaker's point, I don't know that we have an overwhelming um, groundswell of opinion here that that we need to get rid of it um, or even change it. So I guess it, to sum up, I'm equivocating. Very concise. That was really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that again. That's what I'm doing. John. Um, so I wasn't here when this ordinance uh, was put in. So I do have. Um, I like the idea about permitting. Um, I have concerns around administration of any new change um, from a work uh, kind of workload for our people given financial constraints. Um, I have concerns about enforcement with any type of new um, law that puts into place fines and fees and things like that. Um, I do think it's a, I would look really like to have an opinion from the fire chief and the police chief mm -hmm. that I haven't heard. I think that's very important for me. And um, I agree with Will that while the data may not necessarily uh, cause us to automatically change something, it doesn't hurt us as a governing body to look at something that we've passed in the past and determine whether or not it's, it's effective. Um, and if the end result is to keep it the same, at least the very le at the very least what we've done is uh, reinforce the initial decision. So I'm okay with moving it forward from a discussion point um, to investigate whether or not we need to move forward because we'll have public hearings and we will confirm or reject the uh, findings from the polls. So if this moves forward, I'm not saying I support it, I'm just saying is that I think the work would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Marie. Yeah, um, I agree with um, Mr. Howard, and said his last name was. That, I mean, this was not a scientific survey by any stretch of the imagination. Um, however, a, as a counselor over the last three years, whenever it's fireworks time, I get several uh, emails uh, complaining about it. That being said, I mean, the horse is out of the barn, and it's been out of the barn for a long time. Um, I, I agree with Mr. Babine that it makes perfect sense to review it again um, and, you know, whether it's through the ordinance process or, or however you choose to do it, I am intrigued with the permit thought because, you know, burning permits are something the fire department does all the time, every day. Um, so, to me, yeah, it might be worth looking at again, just so that the public knows that we're at least looking at it, addressing it, um, and um, giving them a chance for more input. Good, thank you, Chris. So uh, I'll probably take the opposite tack here, <laughs> shocker. Um, I, I don't necessarily, um, you know, uh, I, I guess when I look at ordinance changes and I look at issues, there's, there's three basic things, right? The first thing for me is first do no harm. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of subjective feedback, uh, clearly, that, that people are not happy with it. Uh, I'm not sure if any of the actions we take are going to resolve that, quite frankly, unless we ban them outright. Um, you know, we could permit, um, and if I understand Mr. Uh, Graham's position, I believe he was talking about permitting outside of the 4th and, the, and New Year's Eve, which, again, I don't necessarily have a problem with for weddings, anniversaries, whatever the case may be. Uh, I think, but I, I think trying to regulate something on the 4th of July and New Year's Eve uh, is, is nearly impossible now. Uh, I think it will be no different whether we change hours and times, otherwise uh, you know, we have to just ban it outright and even then. I don't know how we're going to enforce it, to be honest with you. So um, I, I certainly want to, uh, first and foremost, safety first. I mean, that's our role. That's our function here. Um, we have an obligation to protect the public um, from you know, any kind of harm or hazard. So I would love to see, uh, to Councillor Babine's point, information from the police and fire department, uh, hard evidence, not a subjective survey. Uh, number of calls, type of calls, uh, number of transports, type of transports. And I'm not just talking about somebody, you know, hurts themselves with a fire. If we have more heart attacks <laughs> during the 4th of July and New Year's Eve, that could, be a, you know, that could be an issue as well. So I'd like to see some more empirical data in, in terms of what the real outcome is in, in the community. Um, and then I, I think we, you know, um, how we address it, I think we always have to be mindful of the enforcement piece of it. And I think the uh, hearing from the chief on how he plans to enforce something, whether it's restricting hours or, or outright banning. Um, as we know, the beach communities are the biggest problem, but they also tend to be people from out of state. 
Uh, you know, and if you show up on the 4th of July and rent a house, are you really going to read the fire ordinance or fireworks ordinance in Scarborough? Yeah. I doubt it. Um, so then what do you do? You know, do we, do we issue tickets and citations right off the bat? Mm -hmm. Are they going to pay them? How are we going to follow up on that? You know, all of those issues I think need to be addressed. So I'm not saying that there isn't a concern out there. It's clear that there is a concern out there. Um, you know, uh, I think more public comment was, is warranted, but I'm, I'm a little leery to just kind of jump right into it and start making changes um, because we, you know, we're, we're, we're feeling like it's the right thing to do instead of knowing there's an outcome. That we take no formal action at a right. workshop, right. so you recall. So uh, in the, under that circumstance, Katie, way, way in. You'll, sure. be, you'll be here in a few weeks. <laughs> so uh, I love them. My dog hates them. Uh, plovers do not do well with them, uh, as we know. And um, all animals, in fact, and vets uh, who have PTSD have a very difficult time uh, with them. That's why the noiseless fireworks really, right. that appeals to me. That said, you know, I think we're pretty limited in what we offer at this point. Um, there is something special about the 4th of July and that sense of patriotism and it is something I think our country could certainly use more of. So I'd hate to us see us move too quickly on something. Um, and then lastly, I would just say I agree with uh, what many of you have said. The data right now is, is not statistically significant enough to inform a good decision. We would need a lot <coughs> more. Um, I mean, your sample size is good, but we don't know if that's, you know, 200 people submitting over, mm -hmm. you know, 100 right. different right. times or not. So, mm -hmm. shoring up the survey process. Um, but it was, I applaud you for t making this an exercise and in, in getting the community involved. Thank you. Peter? Yeah, I think I kind of echo sort of around the table. I mean, for me, you know, I kind of go back to the New Hampshire thing of, you know, live free or die. I mean, there's, there, there's some things that are just, it is a tradition on the 4th and, and New Year's. Um, and I'm not convinced, even if we were to preclude them or outlaw them or whatever, restrict them. I mean, I remember as a kid, they were illegal, but we had plenty of them on the 4th of July and New Year's. I mean, you buy them out of state. So I think there's a real administrative issue, permitting. we got to ask what that involves. I, 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 we didn't ask, but I bet the flow of customers through your store, I've been in there on some of those holidays, it, it, there, there's lines out the door. So, yeah, so, so the administration of permitting and that type of stuff, and even if people didn't have permits, the enforcement issues and all those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's two sides of it. I mean, I, you know, and it's sort of where do we draw the line? I know I, have, I live in a neighborhood. There have been plenty of parties at my neighbor's houses that cause a lot more noise and distraction than fireworks. Um, so where we are start going to have restrictions on parties and celebrations and other things. So I think, so I think I kind of echo what everybody says. I'm not sure there's compelling evidence here. I certainly would agree with, with Councillor Babine that you know it's probably a great thing to have further conversations about and to get some more input. But I'm not really anxious to, to move into this very quickly or making big changes. And, and I'll tell one anecdotal story. There's, there is, there's a gentleman here in town who was a close family friend that passed away about two years ago. It was, it was a gentleman that was swimming off Pine Point. And he lived for the 4th of July celebrations. I mean, he would plan the fireworks all year. He invited the whole community. The community would shut down. Everybody in the neighborhood came over. And he did it very respectfully and very safely. But it was his pride and joy. And it was the 4th celebration. He put music to it and other stuff. But for some people, it is a big deal. It's a social thing and other things. So I think, I think we need to take our time and, and get the input and make sure we, we listen to folks and do what's right. Okay. Um, okay, first of all, nothing goes fast <laughs> with the council. So I think to reassure people out in the public, it, it, this is not something that even if we all sat here tonight and said, yes, send it to ordinance or send it here, and let's talk about it. That That's still months and months and months away before it even comes back, even if it made it back to the council. Um, the second point I want to make is there, we do have statistics from the PD and the police department that we can get to you, to anybody. Um, we pulled those when we talked about it in ordinance. Um, we did talk to the fire chief and the police chief, and that's very easy for us to get um, information from them again. That's a, that's a quick, they, they both have the str pretty strong feelings about it. Um, so that's an easy solution. Um, it's my opinion that when an, a certain amount of people come to us and ask us to look into something, it's our duty to do that. And so 
I this is just something, and maybe it's maybe it's a personal thing for me, just because it's been on my plate for so many years that I just can't let it go like a dog to a bone. I just I'm like I can't let it go. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying I want to take days away from people or I want to take fireworks away from people. I just think there's a better way to be doing it, um, and I think there's a there's a way that we can be doing it that can satisfy more people than who are satisfied now. And I don't think that means that that means we need to hire more staff, or we need to um, make any crazy computer programs, or we need to hurt companies in town, or we need to ruin people's holidays. None of that. I just think that with a little bit more investigation into this and a little bit more work, there is a way for us to be able to make some other people happy and to continue to make these holidays safe. I have no problem with fireworks. I don't. It's not. It's not a beef with me. My problem is that I get emails and questions from people that are upset because they are changing holiday plans because their houses are getting littered on by fireworks. That to me is a problem. So that's why I haven't been able to kind of let this go and that's why I feel very strongly um, that it needs to go somewhere. Where that goes, that's a council decision. Um, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me where it goes, but I think there needs to be some council members working on this. Thank you. Um, my own sense is that uh, uh, from listening to people who are friends and in the neighborhood is that there's a real uh, fire concern uh, in congested areas. And I live in a congested area, so I have a lot of friends who give me feedback. And there are people who are normal people who actually hose down their yeah. roofs yeah. Uh, because it is there's so much fireworks mm. at the at the beaches, uh, so that that I think is a real concern. Uh, as far as the report we got on the, I, that's a remarkable amount of interest in an issue, uh, and more than half the people said address it. It's a concern that they have about what we have. Uh, I'm not inclined to uh, do away with something that's already here, if it's, but I also don't want to create a mess of a regulatory process. None of us want to do that. Uh, the permitting, I think, seems to have been uh, an interesting idea for a number of people, and I would think that that might be a way to get a handle on things, but uh, uh, that remains to be seen. I think I agree that a further discussion about this, probably at ordinance, is probably in order, uh, and that uh, uh, we're not committing to anything. What we're committing to, I think, is to understand the implications of going in different directions. And then uh, let the ordinance committee report back uh, when it's ready to report back. Uh, no timeline. Uh, Good. Uh, are we? Uh, are we set, Peter? Yeah, I'd just like to humbly apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Fall on my sword. For some reason, I looked at it quickly. I thought tonight was 6:30, so I humbly apologize. <laughs> <laughs> A little delay. So we'll we'll proceed with trying to get more data, more information, certainly from the professionals, and uh, and go from there. We'll keep the council posted as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. So, but let's be just a